Hey you guys, it's your girl T. Um, I just wanted to come on here and do a video. So I'm sure everybody has heard by now that one of the killers of Tyshawn Lee, who was a young boy, aged nine years old in Chicago, who was shot execution style in the alley, one of his killers has been caught. His the second potential suspect, Kevin Edwards, he's still on the run. And they're also saying that there's a third person they're looking at who was the potential driver. So this whole situation is just really, really heartbreaking. Um, as you guys know, I did a video about two weeks ago concerning the entire situation, the donation money, and you know all the stuff that was going on concerning this case. And so when I had initially posted on Facebook that one of the killers were caught, my whole thing is what drives somebody to look into the eyes of a nine-year-old and to lure him into an alley and have no qualms about literally taking his life in that manner, shooting this young boy seven times. They even stated that he had defensive wounds, meaning that he had his hands up to his face. His thumb was shot off by one of the bullets. So my thing is, what caused this man at age 27 to feel like he had no other forms of recourse than to go out and go kill a nine-year-old? So I was just really, really digging and investigating into the story because so many people are focused on the fact that this man's arrested, but nobody's looking at this entire picture. And once I figured out what all happened to cause the death of Tyshawn Lee, the only thing I can say from this entire situation what went down with Tyshawn Lee is that people need to take this as a lesson. While it's very easy to be angry and want revenge, people need to realize this is a lesson. Sometimes lessons come in the form that we don't want them to come in. At the end of the day, I had to take something away from this tragedy. So while researching this story and trying to figure out what would drive Corey to do this to this child, I came across this website called Chicago Crusaders. And what they do is kind of get like the behind the scenes. They get all the details of all the killings that are going on in Chicago. And so what initially happened before this young boy ended up dead two weeks ago, all this takes place back in the summer, back in August. A 21-year-old named Adarius Hayes was killed. Um, both Tyshawn Lee's father and the gang that Corey belongs to, they're in rival gangs. Um, I don't even want to say the gang names. You guys can go research it yourself. But they're both, you know, affiliated and they're in rival gangs. So what happened is that this one young man, um, the 21-year-old Adarius Hayes, he was killed. He was killed. He was found in the same area that Tyshawn Lee's body was found. So he was shot and killed in a car. So a lot of this has been retaliation based on that initial death. What they're saying is that, so based on that initial death, there had been a lot of beef, a lot of fighting and things like that. So right before Tyshawn Lee died, his father had posted a video on Instagram of him being involved with a beating of another gang member. And they were jumping this man and yelling, you know, F the other gang and going off. That caused even more drama right there. And then on October 13th, Tracy Morgan, who is Corey Morgan's younger brother, he's 25 years old. He had just gotten out of, you know, doing time in jail. He was going to a gang calling meeting where basically they take gangbangers from across the city once they get out of jail or ones who want to make peace, who don't want to be involved anymore with all the drama and the gangs. So his mother drove him there to this gang calling meeting. Basically what happened is that after that calling meeting, somebody had been following this young man and his mother and they ended up shooting up the vehicle. They end up killing Tracy Morgan. They end up wounding the mother. The mother, thank God, survived, but her son did not survive. So... They're saying that the killer of Tyshawn Lee is Corey Morgan. He had a he played an intricate part. They don't know exactly which part he played in it yet, but he played an intricate part in this young man's death. So he, it's obvious he was avenging his brother's death and the fact that his mother was shot. But the crazy thing is before Tyshawn Lee even got killed, it also ties back to a young girl who was also killed later on in October. So back on October 18th, a few days after, after Tracy Morgan was killed, there was a young girl named Brianna Denise Jenkins and so what happened with her is that one of somebody posted online that she felt like she was being followed. She was hanging out with a known gang member, you know, somebody she grew up with in the hood. You know, in the hood, you just know people. So she was hanging out with a known gang member. And at that point, they were saying that she was on the phone with her friend. She felt like she was being followed. People were looking to hurt that gang member and they end up shooting up the car. The gang member ends up not being killed. He was hurt. He was shot, but he was not killed. Brianna ends up dying at the age of 19. So... It's almost like they wanted revenge for Tracy Morgan's killing. They tried to get it by killing a rival gang member. But because that rival gang member did not lose his life and this innocent girl lost her life, their next best bet was, okay, well, fine. You know, we're not able to find any of these particular gang members that may be involved. We're just going to get them where it hurts. And then that's where it leads us into the whole Tyshawn Lee murder. So like I said... 
you know, the whole situation is just, it's, it's heartbreaking, you know, just to know that a nine-year-old boy lost his life in that manner, that a child will lose his life who had nothing to do with all the bullshit that was going on around him. You know, his mother, she, you know, she was cutting the face um, back in August on her Facebook page. She was talking about that. People are saying that she's also in the gang. You know, at the end of the day, you know, I was very upset initially in my other video because I felt like, one, I think for me, it wasn't so much about the donation money being squandered. I think for me, I was more upset that at nine years old, this child lost his life. You know, and I'm sure the parents are mourning, you know, regardless of her going to Vegas and, you know, a little receipt going off on her and people, you know, cussing her out on social media. At the end of the day, she gave birth to that child and I know she's hurting. You know, there are pictures of her here at the funeral. You know, the father also did a radio interview and I know deep down inside he feels mad guilty because he knows his actions. He can say what he wants to say to the papers and you know, whatever I do don't affect my son. You know, whatever you do and whatever you did definitely played a part in your son's death. You know, and I know he's gonna be riddled with guilt. He was even saying that he feels like he has nothing else to live for. Pierre, can I ask you a question? Are you nervous about losing your own life? Because, you know, I, your son was murdered. So do you feel like someone, because like um, Carla Lee said that she got a car to protect herself because she might be a target. Do you believe that there might be other targets in your family? Actually, to be honest, I've been out here long enough to know like if somebody wants to touch me, I could get touched. Can't no man say they can't get touched. So it's like I'm actually not scared. Because, like, bef before this situation happened, I may was scared. But it's like now, that was my only boy. It's like I ain't got nothing to, I ain't got nothing to live for. And while it's so easy to condemn the parents, and it's so easy to say, you know what, you're a gangbanger, you're a thug, you know, lock them up, throw away the key, who gives a shit? I want Tyshawn Lee's father to realize that he does have something to live for. You know, his, do not allow your son's death to be in vain. Do not allow this situation to define you. Use this as a teaching method. He can take his loss, everything he went through, you know, how he was raised in the streets. He can take this, this lesson because at the end of the day, the little boy is not coming back. But take his life take his death, take his legacy, and use this as a lesson to help other young men in Chicago, to help other young men around the country who are going through the same thing. Because there's a lot of young guys out here who are in gangs, who are, you know, either gang banging or they're affiliated and they're doing things and they're not realizing that the ramification of their actions can take a toll on their family members. Like it's to the point now in 2015 where there's no code. There's no code in the streets. There's no ethics. Anybody can get it. Babies, women, old people. You know, it's sad. So I think instead of Pierre being so riddled with guilt that he feels like, you know, he wants revenge or he, he has nothing else to live for, I want him to take his son's death and use this as a way to go out into the community and help other young men who might be in the same situation. Help change other young men. Be that example. You know, and I think Tyshawn Lee's mother should do the same thing. From what I'm hearing, she's finally moved out of Chicago. I'm not sure how true that is. Hopefully she did get up out. So, um, there's also other young kids that are related to Corey. A lot of those kids have been snatched up out of the elementary school. Their parents have now fled the city because they're scared that retaliation might come on their kids because of what happened to Tyshawn Lee. We have to stop this cycle of violence. I mean, and, and the thing that bothers me is before it even got to Tyshawn Lee, three other people had been shot and two of them had lost their lives. And what's even more sad is that after Tyshawn Lee, you know what I'm saying? While we were all here celebrating, I was so happy you guys see my Instagram video where I'm just, you know, I'm, I just feel so blessed to just see another day. You know, even seeing the snow, even the fact that I'm out here in Minnesota right now and it's like, you know, 10 degrees, and it's cold, I'm just happy to like, you know, be here to see another day and you know, you know, life is far from perfect, but at least we're here to see another day. So while we're giving thanks and spending time with our family, the day before Thanksgiving on November 26th, a 16 year old young man named my Sean Dunning was killed as well. You know, he was shot in the head execution style, but this hasn't been on the news at all. And then on Thanksgiving day, a 23 year old man named John Tay Walker was killed on Thanksgiving day. How evil do you have to be to take time away from your dinner table, to take time away from your family, to go out and take somebody else's life and take them away from their family? You know, so this is just what bothers me, which is everything that's going on in not only Chicago, but just in this world. You know, it's just so much evil going on out here. It's like people just do not value life. 
People don't care about other people. People are not empathetic. People don't put themselves in other people's situations. You know what I mean? We're dealing with the death of a nine-year-old child. But since he died two weeks ago, there's been two more people killed. And on Thanksgiving Day, there was literally six shootings in Chicago. You know, just that Thanksgiving holiday, those two days that the kids are out of school, the day before Thanksgiving, the day after, you know, there were several shootings. Meanwhile, they're dealing with the police cover-up and the corruption of everything that happened to um, Lee Kwan McDaniels. You know, so it's a lot of things that are going on right now in Chicago. And I understand the frustration. I understand, you know, being upset at the police. But while we're marching and being mad about the police and being mad about Lee Kwan McDonald's, you know, murder... There's still so many other black people losing their lives in not just Chicago, but everywhere. And I think that outrage needs to be all across the board. I think we should be upset when a 19-year-old girl who's in college ends up losing her life due to who she's hanging with. You feel me? I think we should be upset when a young man comes out of prison and he's honestly trying to do the right thing. He's going to this gang meetup with the police, you know, trying to get up out the gangs, trying to do better. He does not want to go back to prison. And after he leaves such a positive event, he loses his life. There should have been outrage then because maybe if there was some type of outrage. Maybe if we were so upset back then, maybe that would have sparked a change in Corey to not go out and go kill another child. They're stating in the deposition that he made comments that you know, now that his brother's dead and his mom is shot, anybody can get it. He doesn't care, kids included. You know, that's just really sad when you get that down and out that you have no qualms about taking a nine-year-old child's life. And the way that they did this young boy, they went to him. Um, you know, it's clearly obvious they knew the kid. They went up to him. They talked to him. They were dribbling ball with him. And then they eventually was like, you know, come with me down the alley real quick. Come here, you know what I'm saying? Come, come walk with me real quick. So, you know, Tyshawn did. He walked with them down that alley only to be shot. I just could not imagine the last moments of that young boy. And, you know, to go from hanging out with these guys that he may have respected, may have known. they known him since he was a kid. Sean Lee's mom even um, said a statement to the reporters and she stated that she's known the killer. You know, she grew up with these guys. You know, she, she was cool with them. So I'm sure Tyshawn knew them as well. So to go from seeing people that you consider friends of the family or, you know, people you just know in passing... And then in one moment, they just, you know, one moment they're cool, they're playing ball with you. And the next moment at the drop of a dime, they just turn evil and they turn on you and they take your life. You know, this is just really disturbing. And also the young man, Kevin Edwards, that they're looking for, um, his sister also released a statement to the paper as well. She's saying that she has not seen her brother since October and that she also feels like her brother, you know, he might have been there, but he wouldn't have took a young man's life because they have little brothers. And that means nothing. The fact that your brother was even there and was okay being part of this says a lot. And he also needs to be caught. You know, so this situation is heart-wrenching. You know, there's no winners in this. And no matter how much people go off on her Facebook page and call her a horrible mother, and no matter how many people go off on the father and say it's his fault because he was a gang member, at the end of the day, it's not going to bring Tyshawn back. I think, like I said initially, they need to take this as a lesson and use this to go out into the community and educate people and let them know what they're going through. Because so many times we don't see that human aspect. We don't see the behind the scenes. We don't see the hurt. We just see the newspaper articles and we just see the headings. And then eventually we just go on to business as usual. But what was the last time you talked to Tyshawn? What did he say to Dad, you, his father? Daddy, can I spend a night at your house tonight? Mm -hmm. I told him he got school in the morning, no. I was like, and that was the last conversation you had with him. Last mm -hmm. conversation. Damn, but I know that has to hurt. Man, like, um, I don't, okay, I don't like crying. Yeah. Right. I don't. Right. It ain't. It ain't a man. There ain't no any such thing as proud. Man, ain't no such thing as proud because pride to get you killed. Absolutely. So it's like I don't care about crying. It's just certain things like. When I think about it, like, yeah, that was the last thing we actually, actually ever said to each other. He wanted to spend night. I said, no, you got school in the morning. It so drains you. You yeah, drain that, 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 And I never even thought about to even think, like, yeah, that's the last thing he said. See, you actually just said that, like, like damn, that was the last thing he said. You know? That 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 hurt. That that really hurt. And like I said, that hit me below the belt. Like, it really hurt. Like, I came in. Man, it's like, what? I can't. I'm confused. I was like, 
I don't know, man. So many emotions. But the, this family, you know what I'm saying? Even if they're not together, this young man and this young woman, they're going to have to deal with the fact that their nine-year-old child was murdered in such a heinous way, you know, that they have to take that anger and they have to do something with it. If not, that anger is going to drive them crazy. That anger may cause them to go out and hurt somebody else, to take another person's life. They had to take that energy and redirect it into something positive. If not, this is enough to drive you crazy. You know, so the whole situation to me is sad. Like I said, there's no winners. You know, now we have another black man who's going to be locked up for the rest of his life in the prison industrial complex because he had no emotional self-control, because he had to get revenge for his brother's death. You know, we have a young girl, like I said, who lost her life. We have a nine-year-old child who lost his life. And then we have two more people who have since lost their lives since Tyshawn died. So the whole situation is just sad. You know, all we can do is keep Chicago in prayer, you know, just keep America in prayer in general, because like I said, it's not just going on in Chicago, but all over the country where people are just becoming so heartless. They don't care. They have no qualms about hurting children. You got people out here hurting their own children, you know, other people's children. It's like, there's just no more love in this world. And it's just really, really scary. And it's just really, really sad. And you just need to realize that every day that you wake up is precious. You know what I'm saying? Be blessed. You know, love those around you, love your family members, because you never know if you're going to see them again. You know, so my heart breaks for this story. I'm glad that he was caught, but I'm sad that this man thought that he had to take it to this extreme to avenge his brother's death. You know, and I'm sad that Pierre got so caught up in the gang life that it ended up affecting his son. And I'm sad that Tyshawn's mom did not do what she had to do as a mother. The little boy was living with his grandmother while she just kind of ran the streets and did her. And now she's not going to be able to get those precious moments back with her son. You know, so the whole situation, like I said, is just, it's sad. So many people failed this young boy. At the end of the day, I think what we can do is take this as a valuable lesson. Like the old saying goes, it's better to learn from the mistakes of others so that way you're not destined to repeat them. So anyways, let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts on this entire situation concerning Tyshawn Lee. Let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment. All right. Deuce. Hey you guys, it's your girl T. Make sure to subscribe, like, and share my videos. You can also visit lovelytea.com to purchase any merchandise. Also, don't forget to click the boxes down below to watch any of my previous videos. Talk to y'all later. Deuces.